Okay. So, um, man, I finally got around to beating it. This is a, this is gonna be a review on Resident. Oh, there we go. Resident Evil Biohazard. Played through the game. Finished it. Even played it in VR. Didn't play the whole game in VR, but I did play it in VR to try it out. And here's my review. So, but first, before we get into that, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a uh, backstory on my Resident Evil history. Because I, I just feel like that's kind of important, knowing what it's about going forward. Because I feel like if you only started watching the Resident Evil movies and playing the games during last generation to now, you don't have a really good idea of Resident Evil or what it really should be. Now... Um, I started off with the Resident Evil way, way back in the day, like in the, uh, in the late 90s, very, very late 90s, I'm not that old, and, um, yeah, it, it, it terrified me, it truly terrified me, um, I first started watching my dad play, and I couldn't, I don't know, it just, I, zombies, it just, it terrified me, I mean, I loved the concept and idea of zombies but they just terrified me they, they scared the crap out of me and it was just always like that i just could that's something i could not shake i was just terrified of zombies and um when four came out um you know i played the first one didn't really much care for it too too afraid to play it when four came out played it beat it beat five never beat six because that was more action oriented and it just didn't feel like a resident evil game and then fast forward from 2012 all the way to 2017 we have resident evil 7 biohazard now one thing i like about this game is how it's not a reboot they just it's literally called resident evil 7 Biohazard. They didn't pull a God of War or all these other series where they're just kind of rebooting the series. This is a straight continuation of the franchise. And yes, this does take place in that same universe of 4, 5, and 6, and 1, and all the other ones. But, okay, this game, first I want to talk about the story. Let's, let's go ahead and talk about the story because that's, that's important in any game is a story. Now, with Resident Evil 7, you play as a character named Ethan and his wife has been missing for three years and all of a sudden he gets like an email video message from her that she's pretty much alive and it's it's almost like she's it's almost like she sent an sos saying yo come help me like i'm i'm alive help me and you know with that being his wife he goes out and he tries to find her and what and it leads him to this big creepy ass mansion called the baker estate which is owned by the bakers which i mean obviously you should know who the bakers are at this point if you've even seen the trailers and that's pretty much your plot from then on guy's wife went missing three years ago suddenly all of a sudden one day just gets an email from her and she's in like the south part of louisiana which sounds so so terrifying in itself i wouldn't even want to go just from hearing that but you drive all the way out there and then bam that's your plot you see this big creepy ass house gotta find your wife and you go from there and I gotta say, man, Resident Evil really returned to its form. It really returned to its survival horror roots. Because with the movies and Resident Evil 6 and even 5, the games turned, like, okay, the thing about 4 and 5, they, they started off as survival horror, and then they quickly went into action. And then 6 was flat-out action, nothing more, nothing less. That's exactly what it turned out to be. And, you know, for someone like me, who I've grown up with Resident Evil. I know about Nemesis. I know about how it all started. Well, I'm kind of fuzzy. My memory's kind of fuzzy now because I haven't watched it or played the older games in a long time. But at its core, Resident Evil is survival horror, and that's what this game is. That's what it inspires to be, and then it succeeds. I mean, when you play through the game, you hear these... It, it, you, the, the sound is so good, and, and I'm, I'm sorry if you're playing this game with a, a surround sound headset because you are going to be terrified. I say sorry because you're going to be afraid. I mean, it, it's so creepy. I have Astro A40s with an Astro Mix Sam, so I'm getting that true 7.1 surround sound. I can hear everything around me, and, and it's terrifying. It, it truly is terrifying. And, um, you know, the game... Like I said, it really it really stays with the roots. It, it's gone back to the roots, I should say, rather. And you feel like item scarcity is a thing now. Like, I don't ever feel like I have all the bullets in the world. I, no, I never feel like I'm overpowered. I'm always, There's been so many times playing the game where all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I don't know how I'm going to get past this part because I have no bullets. I, I have no idea how I'm going to do this. And... The game, it really just goes back to what it should what it should have stayed at. And yes, the game has taken a lot of influences from PT, 
It's taken influences from um, Outlast, all these games. I mean, that's cool. I'm okay with that because it's Resident Evil back to its roots. As long as it goes back to what I want it to be personally, which is survival horror, I don't care how they do it. It could be third person. You know, as long as it sticks with survival horror, I'm okay. And um, one thing I want to mention about the main character, his name is Ethan. You know, a lot of characters left impressions on me like Leon, Claire, Chris, Jill, um, so many other characters. And Ethan didn't really leave an impression on me. I more or less felt like he was just some guy who I was playing as. Like, I felt more, I felt like I was more Ethan than Ethan. I felt like I projected more onto myself than he did to himself as a character, if you follow what I'm saying. Like, I don't really feel like he's a character I'm going to remember the next five or six years, as opposed to Leon Kennedy. Yeah, and you could probably say, oh, well, Leon's been in Resident Evil longer. Yeah, but the thing is, is that Leon had character, had personality. And, I mean, maybe, yeah, because he's been in long, you know, been in more of the games, maybe that's why. But I just felt like he wasn't really memorable. I feel like his wife was more memorable than him. But, um, you know, like I said, story... Um, it, it's really good. It makes a lot of sense and it, oh God, the, the middle towards the end. I mean, the story picks up as soon as you start like the first boss fight and, and I, I'm not going to spoil it, but the the first boss fight comes pretty early and if you're playing on Madhouse difficulty. It's like some souls level shit. I mean, it's fucking hard. Excuse my language, but this shit is so fucking hard. Even when you're playing on normal, the game is hard, but, um, yeah, from the first boss fight moving forward, the story kicks in full effect, and that middle to end of the game, oh my god, that it's so good. And there's so many plot points, and there's another cool thing you can do, and this is actually going to tie into gameplay, so let me go ahead and wrap up the story real quick. The story gets really good. Um, a lot of things make sense, a lot of plot holes are kind of filled in in the story, because there are, not I wouldn't say plot holes, but there are little missing gaps that the game, that you don't think the game will fill in, but eventually does fill in, which I really like that. But let's go ahead and move into gameplay. Okay, the gameplay is cool, it, it's solid, it feels great, it's, I mean, everything about the way the guns feel, although I don't like the fact that the game is in first person, but yet you can't ADS. All your character does is essentially hip fire. He points his gun, hip fires. I don't like that. There should have been an aim down sight feature, but then I imagine then the game would be probably a little bit too easy. But no, not even then because it could, you can still make guns have recoil. I just feel like they really missed an opportunity there. I mean, it's really it's 2017. Why am I playing a game in first person where I can't aim down sight? This is not a PC exclusive game. I played this on PS4, obviously. So I'm just kind of like, I'm aiming with a controller. Can you please give me the option to aim down sight? So that was really weird and it kind of annoyed me. But Again, the guns felt great. There's actually real inventory management in this game. You're always kind of moving stuff around, trying to make things fit in a certain way. You're always trying to, you know, do different things to make certain guns fit in your loadout. Because you can't be a complete tank like in the, all the other Resident Evils, like Resident Evil 4, 5, and uh, 6, where you could just equip, um, you could have a rocket launcher at your disposal, then an AK-47, then a pistol, a shotgun, a sniper. You can't do that in this game. You're very limited. You have, I think, four button wheels for weapons. For me... Uh, uh, well, I probably shouldn't say much because I'll spoil it, but I had a pretty cool little setup going with me And I always felt that I never had enough space Which I like that because that like I said it leads into inventory management and it also leads to the survival in survival horror You're surviving so you need more ammo and to get more ammo You got to move things around because sometimes you might not have enough space You got to craft things combine things mix herbs all this different stuff and I always found myself saying dang I don't have enough space for this or this or this and I got you know it gets to a point where I have okay first I start off I started off the game with barely anything at all I was struggling and then towards the end towards the middle and the end of the game I had so much stuff that I could not fit it in my inventory and I, I just found that kind of cool I didn't even find all the collectible um there's there's a collectible this is not really a spoiler at all but there's a collectible bag that increases your capacity in your storage in your inventory or whatever and I didn't find I found all of them but one and I know where that one is but I just forgot to I, did, I forgot to go back and get it but um yeah, gameplay is tight. Um, when, and it really has a lot of like a lot of Outlast features where um, you're playing the game and you're in a situation where you can't kill the enemy, so all you can do is really run away. And when you're uh, when you first encounter Jack Baker, which is the father, you really you can't kill him. You got you have to just legitimately run away. And I really like that because it, again, it adds to the horror as well in survival horror. You're being chased by someone with some kind of 
I, I don't even I can't even describe the weapon that he had. I want to say it was a shovel that had like barbed wire and some other crap wrapped around it. I'm not sure, but um, pretty much when you're playing through the game, you know certain enemies you cannot attack. You can only hide from them. Now some of them have very predictable um, walking patterns, so it's kind of easy to get around them. Or if you're just a little bitch like me, you'll just run and try to get to point A to point B as fast as possible because the idea of creeping around corners is just too terrifying and I got bad bad anxiety, so I don't do that. I mean, every time I've seen Jack, I just ran. Like, I, like, I see him, I panic, I beeline for whatever objective I need to go to. That's just how I played. I'm a little bitch sometimes, whatever. But, um, so yeah, gameplay smooth, solid. The gunplay feels good. I wish you could aim down sight, but it is what it is. Uh, you know the um, the characters are really good. Um, what else? What else haven't I talked about? Gameplay. Um, what else? Did I, did I miss anything? The level design is really good. There's lots of hints and nods to the previous games. Like a lot. There's a lot of nods to Resident Evil One. Like one in particular is uh, well, I could I could say it's not that much of a spoiler. It's towards the beginning of the game. But when you first walk in like the main center of the house, it has it's like a mansion and it's like very reminiscent. I believe that's Resident Evil one. and It looks really, really cool. Um, but there's more places like that in the game that I have nods to previous Resident Evil games. And then um, there was one I, saw, I was playing through the game. I saw a newspaper that said it's been 16 years since the incident in Raccoon City. Those. Um, and then they say something else after that. But it's really cool. Like, there's nods to the game. There's even weapons that are nods to the previous games as well. And it's really cool. The game, it's really... I, I like that a lot because you don't need to um, play the previous games to play this game. You don't need to play Resident Evil 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, or 6 to play 7. This is a complete standalone game. Now, if you went back and played the other games, which I do recommend some more than others, but if you went back and played them... Um, you will definitely know certain things. Certain things will make sense. Um, not that they wouldn't if you didn't play the other games, but there would be certain things that you see. It's like, oh, I remember you, or oh, I remember that. It's it's you know it's little small nods here and there. Now I'm not gonna spoil it, but there is one major. Well, it's not even a nod. It's pretty much there. There's one major reveal at the end of the game. That I, it, I I was going crazy. I didn't expect to see this. I'm not going to spoil it, but for those of you who know, who've played the game, you know who who and what I'm talking about. So there, there's a big reveal towards the end of the game. But um, yeah. So gameplay, like I said, it's smooth, solid. It's great. There's lots of crafting. You can combine herbs. You can make uh like like what was it called? You can make like these cool, strong medicine herbs that are essentially like first aid kits from the previous games. And you can do lots of inventory management, crafting. Well, not crafting, but um, combining things like that. And it's just really, really, really cool. The game. And one thing about the puzzles in this game, the puzzles they were a little bit disappointing because I feel like they were too easy. I mean, anybody with a a brain which I mean I guess okay how do you put this the 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 puzzles were really easy and I feel like literally anybody could have done them and the one thing I liked about the previous games is that a lot of the puzzles really took time for you to think and they took time to do as opposed to this game where a lot of the puzzles just legitimately felt like they were child's play like I can give the controller to a child and they'll just instantly bam they got it like the puzzles did not seem like they were hard to solve at all so that's one thing they can definitely try to um, they could try to rectify in the um, in the next game also VR I want to talk about VR because I have played the game in VR and I stopped I played a good two hours of VR then I stopped now you're probably saying oh you probably stopped because you're too afraid uh, why don't you play the whole game in VR well it's very simple why I didn't play the whole thing in VR I didn't play it all in VR is because the game is very I, I get dizzy I get very nauseous playing in VR for a long amount of time I mean, it's on my channel if you want to go look in my previous videos I did a live stream I played the first two hours of the game in straight up VR and Another thing is that the graphics look terrible. Like, I think you really need a PS4 Pro to truly take advantage of how nice the game can look in VR because it looks like an a old PS3 game in VR. Like, I mean, it looks decent and it's immersive, but it could look a whole lot better. So, I think you need a PS4 Pro to fully appreciate PSVR on Resident Evil. But, that being said, I, you know, it's still, it's a pretty good experience, but... VR is best played standing up, I believe, when you're standing up, moving around, doing all this different stuff, and when you're sitting down, which is what I do when I play all games, I sit down, I don't stand up, 
It's just kind of like, there could be days when you come home from work, you're like, all right, I want to play the Resident Evil, I want to I wanna chill, I want to relax. You can't do that if you're standing up. Not everybody wants to play the game and stand up, and, and that's just so many inconveniences. I mean, yeah, you can sit down and play VR, but, I mean, it's not that great. The experience is not there because you'd have to move the stick, and you, you can't, like, look all around. You'd have full, like, view of everything. It, it's not there. I mean, you got to be standing up, playing to truly enjoy VR because if you're sitting down like I like if I'm sitting down right here and turning and moving my my core might get stuck on my chair and it's just not there honestly I just fully recommend someone to stand up and play and play on a PlayStation 4 Pro to truly get the true appreciation of PSVR but you know that being said um I do believe that um I do believe that the game, you know, in VR, it's great, it's immersive, it's cool. It's, it's kind of hard to shoot because you have to, like, aim with, like, your, your head, like, your eyes. You have to aim with your eyes and obviously shoot with the controller. It's really hard, and I've never shot a gun personally, but I imagine it's not that hard. I mean, it's kind of hard for me to explain it. Go back and watch the video. You'll see what I'm talking about. It, it, it could be a bit much. It's a bit hard. But in PSVR, it's still a pretty good experience. It's very immersive. It's very surreal. You do feel like you're actually in the game. Like That's one thing I have to commend them for. It, I mean, this game truly shows what PSVR can be in the future. If, if developers actually make games in first person for the PSVR, the future of gaming will just look nice. I mean, the game itself just plays so well in it, and it feels like you're actually in the game. It feels like you are there, and it's 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 crazy. But um, but yeah, um, that's pretty much it. The things I didn't like about about the game, um, a lot of characters weren't fleshed out. Like I would say the uh, the son Lucas Lucas Baker felt like he wasn't as him and Zoe. To my knowledge, they weren't fleshed out as well as I wanted them to be, and there were. I think you know, I think that's actually my only gripe with the game, really. And then the uh, the monsters, like there there are mon there aren't zombies in this game. They're they're monsters. They're called molded. They're black and they're called molded. And there are not there. There's not a really huge variety. I mean, there's like four that I know of indefinitely. There's the black molded, that's the, which are the standard that you first run into. There's the molded with this like weird hook thing that they try to get you with. And then there's like these bigger fat molds that like they they throw, they're not, they're not molded they're just kind of like monsters and they throw up a bunch of weird kind of shit at you. And then there's the ones that are like lickers. They crawl and they they're really they're really really fast. So the monster variety could have been a lot better. I would have preferred zombies to be perfectly honest with you. Like I would have loved for them to go back and bring zombies back into the game. That would have been so awesome to have again. But yeah. Um, so the monsters I didn't like could have had more variety there could have done a lot more in that aspect um, I would say the Lucas and Zoe Baker they weren't explored as much as I wanted them to be like physically I mean there are lots of notes here and there you can do this you can do that you know there you can read notes piece things together that are in the game also one thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about gameplay was that there are certain there are tapes in the game that you can play that will fill in like not plot holes like I said before but they, they're, they fill in gaps in the story that you did not know previously okay that Okay, yeah, I just kind of spoiled a, a piece of the game, but I just edited that out, so yeah. But you can pretty much play tapes, and they fill in certain parts of the game. So you're you're kind of like, oh, what happened here? Oh, play the tape? Oh, that's what happened. Or you could be, you could play a tape, and it can actually save your life for when you get to that part in the game. Because the tape will play something that happened previously, and now that you're there as Ethan, you get to, you know, go through it again and, you know, fix your mistakes, or fix that character's mistakes, and so on. And when you play the tape, you actually play, the, like, that part of the game like when you pop in the tape it'll play you know and you like okay you pop in the tape it plays and you and the gameplay continues it resumes you play through that moment again and yes vcr kids ask your parents about it it was a thing so that concludes my review of resident evil 7 pretty good game um like i said there were small things i didn't like but by and large it was a great game and i would fully recommend it at full price buy it now it's on sale on steam for four not steam for uh, psn for 44 dollars Pick it up, buy it, play it, great game, scary, it, it, it hits all those marks that Resident Evil needs to hit, and I hope, I'm pretty sure, there will be a sequel at some, some point if it isn't already greenlit, and yeah, so Resident Evil 7, great game, recommend it, play it, and that's it for this video, so thank you so much for watching this video, if you really enjoyed it, please be sure to hit the thumbs up button, it really helps the channel grow, share it on all your favorite social media, and I will catch you guys in the next video, so thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and as always, have a great day.